Um, as you can see, over on the manual lathe now, um, I purposely put the chuck key in there because I knew it would make a few people crazy. Um, but I'm smart enough to use, take the chuck key out before I, before I uh, start up the spindle. Uh, in some cases where the more modern machines have a chuck guard, so I'll just lower that down to actually show you. I've shown you in the U, in the U drill video. But um, you can't really leave the chuck key in there and start that from well, from what I can gauge now. Pretty much you can't. So, and these have got a switch in the. So if they're not lowered, they won't start. So um, I know a few people get a bit upset when you leave the chuck key in there. All this nonsense about when I used to hear about when I was an apprentice. Uh, if you leave the chuck key in there, you'll get the sack and all this sort of nonsense. I never did, and I left the chuck key in there more than I should have. But you're just smart enough to know to not to start the. Usually, the last thing you're doing is it's an argumentative point and not something I brought you here for. But the you're smart enough as a machinist. I'm talking about now to remove the chuck key, and it becomes a habit, just like putting your shoes on before you go to work. I mean, if you're totally, if you if you're that distracted, you can't even think to take the shut key out. Well, then obviously you're going to remember not to leave it in there again. So I'll leave that one in there for the moment. So make make some of you people crazy. Um, just grab some simple bushes. They're a um, past left over from the job. They will run off centre because there's a hole in there that's meant to run off centre. So if it looks a bit skew if that hole is slightly off centre. Uh, these were bushes that were made for a customer. I've made a fair few of them. These are just stuff that was left over, and I just thought this would be a perfect piece to use to uh, as a sample to show in this video. So, pretty common thing to make on a lathe is bushes, shafts, things like that, but especially bushes. You're always making bushes for something. Bush for a shaft, no matter what material it is, brass, steel, bronze, whatever it might be. So, the thing that usually is probably the hardest, well, I would say hard, I probably shouldn't say, is getting getting the overall length right. So in some cases it's probably not critical, but if you have an overall height that needs to stay consistent over multiple parts, um, there is a couple of ways to to uh, I suppose find a cure for that. I suppose you could say, and that's the idea of this video is show you probably two ways that that I do uh, that I use to keep the parts consistently consistent over length and we'll run these four and then we'll measure them in the end and see how we went so I won't I won't film the whole lot but I was a bit too boring if it hasn't already so what I'll do is I'll get the machine set up uh, to be able to run it but before I do obviously I'll show you the actual how the system works or one of the systems worked probably grab you one of the most simple ones first If you're from the CNC world, um, machinable soft jaws are not something new. It just becomes a fact of life. These aren't from the from the, the CNC lathe, as you can probably see by the by what's mounted on the bottom there. So I have different size cuts in here for different size parts that I do multiples of. I don't do much of it now because obviously that all that work usually goes over onto the CNC lathe now. I don't have to do it on the manual lathe, but that is one way to hold parts and keep your, your height or your length consistent where you're putting the part in, it's bottoming out on here or the shoulder up here or in the case of the other side, they're all varying in sizes for parts that I've made and still occasionally make anyway if I only need a few of them. So they're not totally useless and you can recut them. They're, it's a machinable grade steel and you can just make these yourself out of just um, bar stock anyway. There is a bit of machining in them and that's all I do. I don't buy these, I just make them myself and then just stamp a number on top so they correspond to that particular jewel. So you're putting it back in the same spot, a la CNC laves are the same thing. The other option is just putting things down in between pausing. So you see the little jumps in the video. Um, the next thing is probably a little bit hard to get into the, into the camera, but I'll bring one part of it into the camera, which I'll probably say, what, what's that got to do with anything? So this is one part of what you could make and I've made it's actually a part left over from something that I made for a customer I made it was slightly longer than this not that's important for this video but the part actually came from uh, originated from a customer something I was thinking about making myself and I made the part I made it in right hand the customer didn't specify it as left hand thread on the drawing and we finished up resolving it anyway but I made, basically I finished up with a left hand and a right hand version, but the customer only needed the left hand version. So he's a good customer, so I didn't push the point about getting him to pay for it. So it was pretty much made up to this point, except for the hole in the center. I don't know what it was for. It was a little bit taller than this. I've cut it down and modified it 
for this actual part. So what I'll do is I'll take you around the back of the scene. Some of you probably already work out what's going on. And it's just about trying to get your overall length of those bushes to the right length. So we go around to the back of the machine and show you where that fits in. Now if you've watched my video of having elect electrical problems with my manual lathe, you'll understand how close my lathe is to the wall. So um, that's pretty much where I am now. So most of you will have a thread in the in the, in the um, through bore on your chuck, um, on your on your machine on your chuck. Uh, on the on the uh, through bore, I'll get I'll get back rewind that again. Uh, you'll have on your through bore, you'll have a thread at the end. Okay, so that thread matches that thread there, which in my case is uh, M80 by 1.5. It'll vary for yours, and it is left it is right hand thread, and no, it doesn't undo when the uh, machine starts up because generally I'm not firing it up at 5,000 RPM where it's sitting at zero and then it's starting up, whereas the inertia would help it to actually undo because it's the same as spinning in the opposite direction of the thread, you could say. So it should really undo itself, but it doesn't, okay? So it has these machine sections in here and you use a C-spanner to tighten it up. Just bring you back on the top for, for those who might be interested. So just your standard C-spanner that's available at most places you can buy, most industrial suppliers. Okay, so you just use the C-spanner, because I can't show you on the back of the machine how to do it, because I haven't got enough room to get in there with the camera and me being in there. So you're just tightening that up and loosening off with the C-spanner, okay? So, trying to reach over and grab things as I've got the camera in my hand. So the next part of the puzzle, if I can get it in, is this nice long big bar. Okay, so the hole through the center obviously suits this size bar. And I did forget to show you, just grabbing that again, I'm probably over explaining this, but I'm over explaining it so that people who don't, uh, who are not familiar with machining understand. So it has got a thread inside there, so it's got a grub screw that runs down inside there, so it's bored down so far. Then we have thread in there with a set screw or grub screw, whatever you want to use, it doesn't really matter. So that's in there and you tighten it down on that bar to give you the overall length of how far you want that bar protruding through your chuck. Okay, so there's probably no big prizes to work out how that's going to work now. So the best thing to do is have one end machined down, okay, for your smaller material. Just bring the light over. Machine down on one end, but obviously turning it off on your lathe to make it square on the end. So your parts are just sitting against this, which will make more sense in a second. I'll get it set up just to show you everything. Have a turn down section for your smaller bushes, okay? Flipping them around to the other end. And we have a drill and tap hole. I'm trying to do this and hold the, hold the part and come at the same time. So we've got a thread in the other end. Okay, so you've got a square on it, square end on this end for larger bushes. And I'm going to have the next piece of the puzzle. Then we have nothing too exciting, just two washers, to varying sizes. So with the screw in the center, obviously the screw goes in here and is retained with the thread. Okay, I don't think I need to over, I don't think I need to demonstrate putting the screw in there. So you've got your washer sitting in there. So you have a larger washer, okay? So when you have hollow bar or a larger bush, okay? So you've got that in there and you push the part up against that. As I say, I will set it up in the machine so I can show you and we'll just run through and just show you how accurate it can be. Just facing off those parts, okay? Because I've already faced off one end, as you can probably see. Just not waste too much time. And then we'll put them back in, I'll just face off each of them and then we'll bring them back and measure them. I won't take you through, there won't be any um, fast forward motion. I don't edit videos as you guys. I'm still yet to do that yet, so you'll have to work with me on that one. So I'll go, go through, do one, and then bring you back at the end and we'll go through and measure them all, okay? So, couple of different size washers there so they go inside your bore you can put a sleeve in there to support it in through your hollow bore I do have it it's on top of the machine but you don't generally need it when the grub screw is done up you're done around but if you want it really accurate okay which is better I normally run it for I normally run a bush on this that fits on here and that suits the inside of your hollow bore okay or on your through bore on your lathe it's, it's made out of nylon it can be made of any sort of soft material. Preferably soft material so you're not marring the inside of your bore. But it just makes it easy when you go to load it into. One other thing I did forget to mention, because I don't want to take you through the whole sequence and make this a 35 minute video, it's already getting long enough. 
um, as you do with any any type of thread clean it off however that might be a rag usually I use compressed hair and the same on the ID and then I spray the inside and the OD if you like with a bit of CRC WD 40 whatever you like to call in your part of the world okay so it goes in nice and wet and then that way you're wiping out any grime that's in there and just hitting with the compressor air inside there as well because obviously there's going to be swarf inside the hollow bore make sure it's nice and clean in there you can even run it on low speed and just run a rag in there with CRC just to make sure you've got all the gunk out of there just to make sure it's clear depending on how often you put this in and out of your bore okay and just so you can see that inside a sequence instead of me showing you how to screw that in you pretty much know how to screw the thread together so as I say CRC WD40 wind that in using your spanner and then we go around back around to the front as I say I'm trying to skip over a bit of this not to drag it on too long now with the truck key in the truck again <laughs> and what you do is you just put the bar inside the inside the jaws okay usually you're just using hard jaws normally you would be using hard jaws if you're using this for a length stop let's say that's basically all it is all it is okay so you just do it up neat just back it off a little push it through okay and it should pretty much self align to the to the back okay there we go okay so that's in there now so it should be poking out the back so I'll take you around in the back now just give you a look and then we go around the back now so it'd be easy if I edited video but probably take probably take me two years to be able to make this video as you can see we've got your mount of them inside the machine now it's not the best position but it works for the camera Got my favourite uh, insert at the moment, CNMG, for those who are curious. Uh, we've got our bush, okay. So we've got our shitty end on the other end. We've still got a machine off and we've got our nice end that we've already machined. Just wind the drawers out. I did leave the, I did leave the truck hanging in there still, so. <laughs> so just knocking that through. Okay. It's a bit awkward of it and just have it until you've got what you want hanging out the front okay and then you go around and set your screw so I'll just pause you there and bring you back so I've already taken the chuck key out so you can relax now and I'll put it back in again now so what we do now is after we set the screw so there's there's your pin inside there the reduce the turn down end I showed you earlier okay just put that in we reset it again because we want to get it back to zero again okay just rotating the part, always good to rotate your part in, in a lathe or whichever it might be, especially lathe. Rotate the part as you tighten it up, tighten down the truck. And I'll just pause you out from there and we'll just do a little bit of a cut and we'll bring you back. Now using a little bit of common sense, you already do, you've got to do your own calculations. Obviously I can't do that for you. You work out what length you need, measure with your verniers, find out how much material you've got on there. You know roughly how much you can take off, simple facing off operation. You know that about a manual lathe, I don't need to show you that part. We've done our first face off. So then we take the part out, measure it with the verniers, and then we do our recalculation and then we wind in. You, you, usually if you've got a DRO it's a lot easier, but if you haven't then you'll have your dial indicator on your saddle, so that works for you as well. And then you just do your maths from there and then once you set your zero up you just go bang 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 and you've got whatever amount of bushes done, all the same length. For those who are interested, we'll just do the last cut and then we'll take over into the bench and we'll do a final measurement. I'm taking off approximately 0.4 to 0.6. I didn't measure any of the parts, this is just a sample video, so that you'll have to calculate your overall length, whatever you've cut off your saw to whatever you've, you know, your stock material is, and then you take off the appropriate amount from your, face, from your first cut and then leaving enough there to do your final cut to give you your overall length. A little bit of noise from the machine, I can't do anything about. your final cut as you can see the holes walking around a little bit in the centre. We'll take you over in the bench and we'll have a measure and we'll see how we go. So back over on the bench now. Usual. Zero out now. I don't need to show you that but 
just give them a little bit of a wipe with your finger, make sure there's nothing there, nothing at the top. Okay, so they're nice and clean. Zero them out. Okay, so we're getting measured, so we're zeroing out on each on each one, starting with the zero point. Okay. Bringing in each one. I probably don't need to show you every single one. I'm trying to get a bit more light on that if we can. So the camera will play. I'll turn the overhead light on so it did focus, but it doesn't seem to be helping. Okay, so measure each one. I'll just measure it and I'll just bring it in probably easier. It's too hard to do it in front of the camera. It doesn't seem to want to focus. Okay, so hopefully you can see that okay. 42.73 on that first one. Depending on where you measure, of course, might get slight variation, but that's not too bad. 42.72. Forty-two seventy-four. So seventy-three seems to be the, the sort of plus minus plus minus measurement at the moment. Okay, and I was just trying to. I'm just sticking around because I'm trying to get in the right spot. It's really difficult to reach around the tripod. Okay, so you can see that in there anyway. Forty-two seventy-three again. Okay. So they're not micro, micrometer perfect, but it's generally enough for a bush, and it's just a good example of how you can machine bushes and keep your overall length of any bushes that you're making. It probably works more for, old, obviously, for multiples of. In most cases, you'll probably be only making one or two, and you don't need to put that bar in there. It's probably more so if you're making a few of the same bush, and you want to keep your overall length the same. You don't want to make soft jaws, because in most cases, you won't make the same part again and again. And you don't want 100 sets of soft jaws for different sized parts you'll probably never ever use again so that bar setup that i just showed you is a good way to do it hopefully the information is useful let me know let me know your thoughts in the comments and i'll talk to you guys soon okay bye bye for now